What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm out here in the shop tonight and my lawnmower is broken. So give me a quick little rundown. Last time I got ready to cut my grass, I noticed that the battery in my lawnmower was a little bit weak and I don't have a very big yard so it doesn't take me very long to, uh, to cut my grass anyways. But uh, it did crank. I cut the grass. I noticed whenever I engage, it's got electric PTO. Whenever I pull the knob up to engage the PTO, that the uh, it seemed like the blades took a minute to come on. It didn't instantly come on like it usually does. Like the clutch was slipping or something. It has a brand new clutch on it. Uh, hadn't doesn't have too many hours on it. I installed it a couple years ago, but as I say, it didn't take me long to cut my yard, so it hadn't been used much. Anyway, so when I got ready to cut my grass this time, um, the lawnmower wouldn't start battery was dead. It's a brand new battery. I put it in there, oh, a month ago or so, um, because the previous battery had went bad. Anyway, so uh, I said, well, apparently my battery, my lawnmower's not charging my battery up. And uh, so I got my battery charger out, hooked it on there, charged the battery up so that I could cut the grass. And then after I got done cutting the grass, I did a little testing, which I'm going to show you here what I did uh, to figure out what the problem was. All right, guys, so this is my Husqvarna LZ 5227 mower. It's a 2005 model. I bought this thing used probably 10 years ago and I rebuilt the engine in it. It's a Kohler Command Pro 27. When I bought it, it was fouling the spark plugs out. It was getting oil past the rings and basically the piston rings were uh, collapsed like it had been overheated or something like that. I'm not sure. But anyway, basically I put some new rings in it, reassembled the engine and whatnot and got it back going. It's been running ever since. But you have to pull the cover and everything off uh, to get to where we're getting to, and I'm going to show you that. But just to test the voltage um, at the stator, this is your stator right here. It goes under your flywheel. This is your voltage regulator. You have three pins on your voltage regulator. On most all of these small engines are like this. Uh, the Kohler setup, this middle pin here, goes right up under these coils here, routes around. It goes into the engine harness over here. It actually goes, I think, to the ignition switch and then to the battery. That's how the battery gets charged. These two wires right here go to the stator. I don't know if you can see right here, but under this plate, they go to this stator right here. And uh, so I put my voltmeter, ohmmeter, on these two terminals right here. And you're supposed to get between 30 and 50 AC volts. And this voltage regulator converts the AC voltage coming from this stator right here into... DC volts coming out this pin right here that charges your battery at about 14 volts. Anyway, um, so that's that wide open throttle. You're supposed to have 30 to 50 AC volts. Uh, if you got it idle, you probably get a lot less than that. So anyway, I checked that and figured out that I was only getting about 13 or 14 AC volts across these two pins at wide open throttle. So that's not enough voltage, so I figured the stator was bad. So I went in the house. I didn't want to tear this thing all apart. I got uh, got ready to go in the house and everything. I said, I'll just mess with it later. I'll go ahead and order me a stator and whatnot. So I got on the internet. I was going to try to order a stator. And I got to thinking about it. I laid down. I couldn't sleep. And uh, I was like, I'm going to go back here and tear this thing apart and see just to make sure that it's not something simple like maybe wire was cut in here or something that just could be repaired. And so uh, I come back out here and I start taking it apart. And on this one here, uh, the way the shroud comes off, I should have recorded this when I was taking it apart, but I didn't. But basically, you have the shroud that goes over this here to keep anybody's fingers from getting on that, obviously. It's just three bolts. You got four bolts in this, and then you can pull this cover off, which has like two bolts in each cylinder head cover there. And then, I don't think you have to take this voltage regulator off. There's a bolt right here that goes to the ground strap or ground wire, depending on your mower, what it will have. But anyway, you got to pull that bolt out. There's one on the other side, brown by starter, another one there. And anyway, there's one right here. This mower was damaged on the air filter. Whenever they shipped it to me, they damaged that and it never got really repaired. So the bolt, the way that's supposed to fit, doesn't exactly fit right. But anyway, nothing to it. You pull uh, that cover out. And then this bolts down to the flywheel through these four studs right here, like that. Then you take a impact wrench and you put on this bolt right here. There'll be a bolt on your flywheel. 
loosen it just a little bit or if it spins out tighten it back down almost all the way and uh, you'll need to take the coils out before you do this too uh, which are just two bolts on each coil right here these coils have slots in them and so anyway you pull the bolts out take it out like that it's very important that you get these coils lined back up when you put it back together because if you don't and the coil is too close to the flywheel and the flywheel hits it there's a chance you could break these off the cylinder head and then your engine block is earned and you'll need a new engine block but basically <clears throat> you stick a pry bar up under the flywheel and you tap the bolt with a hammer it's the easiest way if you got a puller I mean you can use a puller too but it doesn't take a lot of pressure just stick a, fly, uh, a pry bar up under the flywheel prize it up whack it with a big hammer and it'll come off so anyway that's what I did because I wanted to see what the issue was and um, I was going to see about ordering a stator or whatever I needed if I found out it wasn't just a wire cut or whatever I wanted to see what the problem was and so when I pull the flywheel off here's what I found there are supposed to be magnets inside of this flywheel right here as you see they are not magnets inside the flywheel there the magnets stuck to the stator it's got a bunch of dirt on there so I don't know how well you can see it but these are the magnets right here they're supposed to be glued to the flywheel they're all stuck to the stator right there so when I seen that I was like well I guess I'll just need a flywheel then so that shouldn't be like a you know a 40 or 50 dollar flywheel right so I'll go and I'm going to uh, see about ordering one well I pull up Amazon, I find one on there, $235 plus tax and freight. So this flywheel is going to be like close to $300. I mean, you could buy like a flywheel for like a small block Chevy with a manual transmission for that, I'm sure, or less. So anyway, I said, well, okay, I wonder if there's a different solution to my problem. I wonder if you can glue those back in or something. And so I did a little Google search on there on YouTube. To see if anybody else had run into this and I ran across a guy called I think it's Terrell's Terrell's fix it all or something like that uh, anyway he seems to know what he's talking about he does he has a small engine channel so if you have some small engine problems I guess you can go search him up and look look at uh, what he's got going on but anyway he said that uh, it's pretty common on the Kohlers to do this and if the magnets are not broken he said you cannot buy these magnets anywhere but if they're not broken He's had success with taking the magnets off and gluing them back in the flywheel with JB Weld or JB Quick. And that these magnets are like north, south, north, south, north, south. So you have to keep up with that. And uh, he showed how he did it by sticking a magnet to the end of it and seeing if it opposes or repels the magnet that he was sticking to the end of it and keeps them numbered. But if, he said if you get them out of uh, order, that it will not charge as well. <clears throat> so we're going to take these magnets off and get them cleaned up and everything, clean all that up. We're gonna clean this flywheel out. He had some neat little clips that he used, paper clips. I don't have any. I don't know what I'm gonna use to, uh, to hold these in here with. We're gonna to have to see what I got laying around over there to do this with. But uh, that's kind of the plan. We're gonna clean this up with some uh, emery cloth here and figure out how to lay these back in here and hopefully I won't have to buy a flywheel that's gonna cost me almost $300. All right, I've got these magnets laying here. I'm gonna pull them out. I figured out how to tell where they go, I believe. And I looked for this while ago, this uh, paint stripping wheel. Couldn't find it, but I finally did find it. So I'm gonna use this to clean out uh, the rest of the rust and stuff out of here. So it works so good and easy.
we've got that cleaned up pretty good. We're uh, JB Weld arc to bond to it pretty well. Got all the rust cleaned out of there. I'm not sure that these factory markings on here mean anything, but what I figured out by watching Terrell's video is uh, if you go to the corner right here, right on that corner, see how that pulls together? So you got one that'll pull together and one to push apart, but it's only going to be on one corner right there. So anyway, I'm going to stick this on here like that. We're going to grab our next magnet, and this one needs to push away. And it pulls together, so we can use that one. So this one pushes away. So this one needs to go beside this one. Because on this inside on corner here, it pushes away. And this one pulled together, as you see. So it needs to go right beside that one. I don't have these things quite as clean as they should be. But I suppose it may not matter. So the next one should push apart. And it does. It'll go there. And the next one should pull together. Nope, oh, pushes apart. That one pulls together, right on that corner. This one has a broke corner on it. I don't think that's real critical. And then this one should push apart. Okay. This one pulls together. Yep. And we gotta get the depth set right on them, which is gonna be not quite flush. I don't believe well. All right, so we got to get the depth set on them, and it looks like the depth of them is just beyond flush, about a sixteenth or eighth of an inch. If you look at the corner right here, there's a little chamfer on that uh, chamfer on that flywheel edge, and you can see where I didn't get the glue line removed down in there. I'm just trying to look where the factory one is glued at. It looks like just down below flush a little bit. I'm not sure how critical that is. But anyway, we want to get these spaced out evenly as possible. So that it's in balance and everything. And it does what it's supposed to do. And then we're going to pull them out one at a time and put some glue on them. Put them back in there. I don't have any clips to put on here like he did. So I don't know how well this is gonna work. It may not work that well. But we're gonna try. <clears throat> Got some original JB Weld here. We're gonna mix some of this up. I'm going to use a gasket scraper here I got to mix the uh, JB Weld around. Got that pretty thoroughly mixed. I'm gonna pull these out one at a time. Put some on the back of them. Put it back 
down on there just like that. Get it in position there. Use the paper towel to wipe off a little excess. It's right where we want it there, kind of. Got it just beyond flush there. We'll move on to the second one here. I don't know if I can just run this through here like this. Pretty good coating doing it that way. Whenever you first put it on there, it wants to slide around and it seems like once you get it kind of pushed into place there, it seems to want to hold. So we'll hope that it continues to hold because I don't have any clamps. I could have used about half the JB Weld I did, I know that. It doesn't matter. I've got plenty. I want to get this spaced out right. I think I got the gaps by eyeballing pretty close. I mean, they're not 100% perfect. I don't think they have to be. As long as they're pretty close, um, they're all setting just beyond flush. I do not have any clamps um, to put on here. I think it's going to be okay. We're going to leave it setting for a little bit, and then we'll uh, check it. Throw this in the garbage, clean this off the end of my scraper. All right guys, I kind of want to lay this down so that that will uh, dry, but I'm afraid with no clamps on that, that they may slide down deeper in the flywheel because there's a gap up under the bottom where they can actually go deeper. And uh, they're not moving right now and it's been sitting there for about five minutes or so. And so I'm thinking about just leaving it uh, just how it is and coming back in a few hours and checking on it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Alright guys, so it's been about 24 hours since uh, we glued these in here and I left this setting up just like this overnight or in day I guess, night and day, 24 hours. But uh, 
It, it appears that it came out good and that they're all stuck in there well and I think it's going to work out pretty good. We're going to uh, stick this thing back on here and see what happens. Alright, so we got to make sure our key is in our keyway there and our keyway on our flywheel is lined up with it. Watch our fingers. Alright, here's our bolt here. I'm unsure of uh, how tight this is supposed to be. I don't have any torque specs on it. But I'm going to put my Milwaukee impact wrench on level one and tighten it in on level one. I believe that should be plenty tight. Maybe over tight if anything, but I'm definitely not going over level one. Uh, because I don't want to break it off in there or strip anything out. All right, guys, getting ready to set the coil back up here. I've got it sitting there. You need uh, basically either one long feeler gauge that go across the coil surface, or you need two sets of feeler gauges like I got here to set your clearance. Right, it's uh, ten thousandths is about what it should be set at. Stick your feeler gauges in there. Then snug your screws up. Don't know what the torque specs are on that either. I kind of feel of it. If you break it off, you know it was too tight, obviously. And you're going to have a bad day. You just don't get carried away with it. Pull these out, rotate it around, set the other ones over here. Now is putting our fan back on top of our flywheel and putting our shroud back on. Got the holes lined up there. They only fit in one spot. And then the shroud goes, and then our little guard goes, or two little guard goes on there, I suppose. Shroud kind of has to be worked around everything down in here. You're probably supposed to take this breather off and this stuff. I didn't. Because it's already kind of messed up anyway. Like so. Find all our bolts over there. Put all the bolts in the uh, electrical box right there. I think that one goes right there. Hold the oil cooler on. Supposed to have one in the bottom of the oil cooler tube. It was missing. Now we got to set this down on there. This uh, is froze up on there. I've tried to get it off. And I've been un unsuccessful. So I'm not going to worry about it a whole lot.
that little guard that goes on there. All right guys, moment of truth. We're gonna see if this thing will charge. It's in the middle of the night. I'm not gonna rev this thing wide open, but uh, I do wanna crank it and see if we got any charging voltage. Because before, when I cranked it at idle, I had like five volts or something like that. So we should see considerably more than that now. Right, guys that wraps this video up um, it's charging like it's supposed to I didn't want to rev the thing all the way wide open like I say because it's like one in the morning I'm sure my neighbors are not thrilled with me anyway uh, probably for even starting a thing but I definitely wasn't gonna rev it wide open um, so anyway I, I was getting about 22 volts there as you saw at about just off idle so I'm pretty sure it's in the 30 to 50 range uh, wide open throttle so it looks like that that's going to uh, to work and that should correct the problem. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.